In my last video, I showed you how to put together this bad boy. And of course, if you realize that while we did get everything put together, we didn't attach any of the cables. We didn't attach anything to the video card. We didn't install the power supply. That's for this video. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through beginning to end how to cable your machine, how to finish the build, but how to cable your machine not only to work, but then after that, how to make it look nice and pretty so that you could show it off too if you'd like. But anyway, let's get started. So in the last video, I had the video card plugged in. I did take it out for this portion because there are so many cables that come in here. While we are going to cable everything at first to make it work and then focus on making it look pretty, these cables right over here, there's not much you can do to it, at least in its current state. You can see how messy they are. And then mind you, as we build into it, it's gonna be more and more impossible to actually get into it to make it look nice. I'm first going to end up taking out the liquid cooling unit. I'm gonna take that out real quick and then we'll work with those cables. This will take about a minute. Now I'm putting my hand here because I have the case standing up and I don't want the liquid cooling unit falling down. I could always lay it down, but then it's harder for me to record that way. Okay. Now I'm gonna sit the radiator on top of the system for now, making sure the hoses don't pull it out of the way. So that exposes all these cables, makes it a little bit easier to get to. Now, if you saw my last video, you would have seen how I connected both 8-pin EPS CPU power connectors because when you have the radiator right here, it's impossible to get anything right over here or right over here. Now the problem is, I forgot to connect this fan. So the rear fan right over here. So that's gonna be connected to one of these guys up here. I'm gonna go ahead and just put it just right over here on the second pump. Unfortunately, there is no other fan connector cable right up here or over here. So I can't really put it around here, but even though it says fan pump or sys pump, it's still a fan header, so that'll work perfectly fine. And we'll save this one for the CPU pump on the liquid cooling unit. The liquid cooling pump, four pin PWM, will connect right over here on the motherboard. And then the ARGB connection will go right over here. Now mind you, this is where I'm doing it for this video, but of course you could do it wherever you'd like. So just sliding in some cables back here towards the back of the system and then pulling everything up and out of here, making it all tight and then joining these cables right over here so that it looks more like one unit. Again, as I mentioned in the other video, since these are going to be blocked, they don't have to look 100% pretty, but you know, you always wanna make everything look as nice as you can. And then because I am recording, it's a little bit harder for me to get perfect access to it without blocking access to you. So bear with me on some of these. All right, so much better. Now we could of course deal with these cables just with smaller zip ties, tying them tighter together, but at least now we have more control up here and it looks a lot nicer that way. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put back that liquid cooling unit. And just because, slide this cable a little bit nicer. Now I'm go, gonna go ahead and put it back. All right, now with that part out of the way, let's go ahead and go down for a sec. One of the biggest problem a lot of builders have is connecting the front IO. The reset button, power button, power LED, and all those different cables. And we're gonna go over that right now. Coming around the back of the system, here are those cables, there's a little grommet right down here that we're going to go ahead and slide all these cables into. And I'm just going to set these cables aside for now because these will be next. All right, now cables are up here. Now it is difficult to see because the entire case is black and the motherboard is black, but on the bottom, under this plastic piece, there is silk screening that tells you exactly what every single one of these is. 
Also inside the mother world box is this guide that shows you how to connect each and every one of these. And we're going to go over this as well here. So the very first one on the bottom, on the silk screening and in the motherboard manual, the plus is on the left, the minus is on the right. On the cable, the hard drive LED. So right over here on the cable itself, we see HDD LED positive is on the right and the negative is on the left. So now what we'll need to do is because the positive is on the right, we'll just flip it over so that the text faces down. You can just peel it kind of like a banana. Just peel it so that you have more room to work with the cables. And again, we're going to be putting the HD LED text facing down as per the manual and just slide that in there. Now, right next to that is the reset plus or positive is on the right. So let's see, reset switch. Now on here, it doesn't show you the positive or negative at all. So we'll keep it in line with the HDD. We'll put positive on the right, text facing down. Now this is with the Montec 1000 light case. You may have a different case. So always reference not only the motherboard manual, but the case manual as well. Then there is no chassis intrusion on the bottom right hand corner. There's power LED on this case. You can see power LED is these two separate connections. They're single. So you have to find the individual pins. So this one is positive and this one is negative. So positive is on the left. Connect that right here. And then negative is on the right. Connect that right over here. And then the last two are power LED and LED switch. So power LED positive on, is on the left instead of being on the right. So the text is going to face up again for power switch. Now the LED switch is for the premium case, or if you had the controller, we don't. So we'll go ahead and skip out on this cable for now. What we'll end up doing now is just slide all the excess cable out of here. Over here on the very top, you'll also notice there's a speaker connection. The Montec 1000 Lite comes with this little speaker, which is incredibly important for motherboards that don't have the, the speaker built onto the board. It doesn't look like this motherboard does. So what we're going to go ahead and do is just plug this guy in. Positive is over here on the left. Negative is on the right. So I'm just going to flip it over and then connect it at the very right, the four pins, each of those four. And because it's long enough, we can slide down here and we don't have to have the cable in the way. Now, the purpose for that cable is when you turn on your computer and you have some sort of issue, it'll help you know if it's a CPU, memory, video card, or any type of diagnostic signal your motherboard provides. We're left with USB 3, either here or here. USB 2.0, RGB and ARGB connections right over here, and then front panel audio. So what we'll do is turn the machine around and we'll grab those cables. Now the USB 3.0, this blue one over here, we saw that towards the front of the case. Actually, I'm going to use that right in the center grommet because we had two. Then I'm going to slide in the HD audio, which is very difficult to see because it's not silk screened on there, but you could see HD audio right there. Now that is towards the back of the case. So I'll slide that under all the other cables to make everything look nice. And then I'll slide it under the third grommet. It'll make more sense when I show you the other side. And then USB 2.0, again with this one, there is no silk screening but you could catch it with the light USB. This is USB 2.0. The one with the blue top was USB 3.0. And we'll go ahead and slide that in the center where the USB 3.0 was as well. Okay, and we'll be back here in one sec. Now turning her around. Okay, right over here, we have the USB 3.0. And you'll notice there is a little cutout right towards the top of the port. Then there is a little notch right over here on the top of the USB 3.0 cable. See that coming along there? So that little cutout is going to allow us and tell us exactly where to slide this into. Now with the USB 3 pins, 
They are very fragile. So you just have to be very careful, even though there was a very loud click, you have to be very careful where you put it. Okay, so that's plugged in there nicely. Over here are the USB 2.0 connections. Now you may notice there is a missing pin over here and a missing pin right over here. And that's going to coincide with the missing pin right over here. So make sure you realize where that is and then we can go ahead and connect it. Okay, connected. And then over here at the very corner, we have that HD audio, much like the USB 3.0. You might notice at the very bottom over here, there is a missing pin, but then on the cable itself, we'll find that same missing pin or blocked off pin right here. So we'll just face that downwards. And there we have it, we have that cable connected. So coming around the back, we can see there are two three pin fan headers. Now because these aren't four pin, they're not PWM controlled, so they're not going to be as quiet as they would be. But we have over here on the back of the board, two PWM fans or two four pin fan headers, which will work as a three pin, but then we have this cable that may not be long enough. Let's give it a try first. If not, we have options. We can see right over here. Now I'll remove this for now so you could see it. That is the most difficult USB 3.0 cable I've ever had to remove. But anyway, we can see right over here, there are two fan headers. So we can just slide that in here. And the second cable, right in here. And then we'll go ahead and put back that USB 3.0 cable. So now all the cables are connected. I'm thinking I'm going to have to color this cable black because it sticks out really badly. So coming around to the back, we can see there's no more cables. Mind you, we have to fix a few of the cables and everything, but from the case itself, there's no more cables to connect. Now we need to bring in the power supply, bring in the SATA cable, and then with the power supply, like I showed you in the previous video, we're going to have to connect the two 8-pin EPS CPU connections that we connected in the first video because of that liquid cooling radiator. So I just went ahead and connected them ahead of time since they are modular cables. So one of the greatest things about a modular power supply is whatever cable you don't need, you don't need to connect. And that saves a lot of space down here as well. But inside of this case, you could see when you plug this power supply in here, you're gonna be coming very close on this tray over here. This tray gives you the ability to install a 3.5 inch drive. Thankfully, in this case, we have our M.2 on the board itself. Then we have the SATA SSD on the back and we don't have any 3.5 inch drives. So we're gonna go ahead and take this out. To do that, we'll just lay the case on its front and then we'll undo these two screws, keeping that cage in place and I'm putting my hand to hold the hard drive cage in place so it doesn't slam to <laughs> inside of the case. Okay, so it didn't slam. What that tells me, yep, just slide it forward and pull it out and it comes off really easily. Just remember, this is where all your, where all your accessories are inside of this little white box. And while we can't use this now, I would say put it away. You never know what tomorrow brings. So now we're going to make an assessment of all the cables we need. So first off, we know we need those two 8-pin EPS connections because they're already connected. We need that 24-pin ATX connection right up here. Then we're going to need three PCIe connections for the video card. 
Then we're going to need one SATA connection for the SSD. So on the power supply itself, I have connected VGA3, VGA1, and VGA2. I have a peripheral cable connected already, which comes with three SATA connections, SATA power connections. And then of course I have the ATX24 pin. On the case itself, we already have the two EPS CPU powers and they are going to go connected to CPU1 and CPU2. So we'll go ahead and do that now real quick. CPU2 and CPU1. Now, as I mentioned in the other video, just because there's two EPS connections up here on the motherboard doesn't mean you need both. You always want one. The second one is for additional power to the CPU in case you're doing hardcore overclocking. I'm not going to be doing that, but I do want to have that there just in case that potential comes up. So if you have it, use it. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and move the cables that we just connected, USB, HD audio, and front panel connections because we're going to be sliding in the power supply. You'll notice there is one, two, three, four rubber pieces. That is to keep vibration and noise levels down on the power supply to reduce noise. Then on the bottom here, there is a filter as well that it is removable and washable so that you clean out every so often to keep dust and everything outside of your power supply since the fan will be facing down. We're going to need to pull these cables out Still even connected, but we're gonna need to lift them a little bit because to fit a power supply, it's gonna be kind of tight. That's the tightest I've ever seen that. Okay, so definitely something to note and all the cables, just make sure you have slack because it's going to be pulling them towards. That's not the greatest design, unfortunately. Okay, but once it's in there, it gives you a little bit more slack because the power supply needs to get over this lip. You can see here, now it fell inside the lip. In order for you to get it out, you need to lift it and then you can slide it out. So it needs to get over that little lip first before it can be seated properly. And then the rest of your cables inside that fit into these grommets have a little bit more pull, but that's a bad design in my opinion. I'll definitely let them know about that for now. Now, it could very well be the power supply. I'll go ahead and list all the measurements down on the screen below of my power supply, the EVGA 1000 G Plus Supernova. So if anything, you can compare with your own. So coming around the back, we're going to need to screw that power supply in. So we're going to go ahead and match up all these screw holes and then we'll just screw it in. The case comes with this little baggy PSU PCI six. So six of these power supply screws. And like during the build, while we are getting the, the screws all in place, don't screw them all in just yet completely until they're all screwed in. That way your power supply could settle in. Now, that you have the fourth one in, then you can screw in them tightly, and then you'll start noticing the power supply come out just a little bit. Diagonal, as always. So now with that screwed in tightly, we're gonna go ahead, pull out all the cables that we're going to need. Notice how the EPS cable came out over here. I expected that to happen. I just didn't expect it to be so tight, but that's okay. We'll deal with that in a sec. So first off, the biggest cable is the ATX 24 pin cable. Now looking around, that cable is going to be right here. So I'm going to slide it in through the top grommet right up here. And now we should slide in the video card. Actually, before we get to the video card, because it's going to add a lot, I think we need to connect the SSD. So what I'll go ahead and do is just slide it out of here real quick, just to make it easy for you. So now we're going to go ahead and first connect the SATA data cable portion. You'll notice there's a little kind of L connection right there. And that's gonna go ahead and align with the SATA cables little L connection here. Then just connect those two. It'll click in place. And the SATA power will use that peripheral cable 
whichever one of the three that it comes with, I'll go ahead and use the end. Same way, we'll go ahead and connect that little L to the little L here on the cable itself. And then we'll just slide it in place. Okay, so it's in there. Now we'll just go ahead and slide this back in and screw this back in. Now, the SATA cable comes with the motherboard. If you want, I'll have in the description below where you can buy additional ones in case you don't have any. Now we're gonna go ahead and slide this SATA data cable into this first grommet over here. I'm gonna go ahead and slide it underneath the SATA power connection just to keep some things a little bit hidden. And then slide it right in here. Okay, now with the SATA, cable coming out of this grommet. We're gonna go ahead and connect it to one of these six SATA connections. And it's going to have that same L connection I was referring to when connecting the drive itself. And we'll connect it right at the very top slot. Now mind you, you can connect it whichever you'd like, but if you connect it at the very top, it's kind of hidden when you have a video card there. So right there, and I'm kind of filming you from the front of the case, so I don't have a lot of light, but you can see right over here where I connected that SATA connection through the grommet. But again, you can use any one of these SATA connections. So now with that connected up here, now we have that drive connected right down here. So now let's go ahead and connect the video card. So first off, coming around the front of the case, we're going to notice the PCIe slot that we're going to be connected into. And during the install portion of the video or the build, we remove the PCIe slots right up here. And one very important thing to notice is right now, this little locking mechanism is open, but you may receive it with it closed like this and a card may not be able to slide into place. So it's always best to go ahead, just open it up to make it a little bit easier. So on the rear panel of the case, make sure that you have this open so that you can actually fit a card right in here. This goes ahead locked like this. It's just holding the cards in place, opened up. Now you can actually fit a card in there. So this little locking mechanism here goes ahead and holds on to this piece right over here on the card. That's what locks in. So we'll go ahead and slide this PCIe fingers into this PCIe slot. And now notice while we're getting the card in there, how that locking mechanism locks in place. Okay, so you notice that little locking mechanism, click in, locking the card in place. So you cannot pull the card out. Now, if you wanna pull the card out, you just push that in and the card will slide out. Then we'll slide around the back and we'll go ahead and close this locking mechanism. We'll just screw these two thumb screws with our fingertips. They don't need to be incredibly screwed in. And then we'll go ahead and screw in the video card. Now we're going to need to bring in the three PCIe connections. We're gonna go ahead and use the grommet built into the case at the shroud level right over here. So I'm just gonna go ahead, slide one. and three to note all three of these came with the power supply there was not a separate cable i had to purchase so if you want a power supply like this i have it down in the description below do not daisy chain these connections one straight from the power two straight from the power three straight from the power supply all coming from the power supply so we'll grab that first one and connect that right here we'll drop the excess down here now mind you we're not going to make it look pretty right now but the more you do now is the less you need to do later just making the six pin an eight pin built into the cable and another PCIe connection straight in here. Now let me bring you in at a different angle for one of the cables, just in case that was a little difficult. Okay, so it's difficult to get a good angle, but I'm gonna go ahead, disconnect this cable. Now you'll notice there is a little locking mechanism right over here. Now that's gonna go ahead and lock into a little notch underneath 
this PCIe power connection. Now, usually on AMD video cards, that little notch is along the top. Not all the time, but on most, it's at the top. And for NVIDIA, on most, it's on the bottom. Could be different on your card. So you either have a six pin or you have an eight pin. A six plus two connection. Some have a straight eight pin. And then we'll just go ahead and slide that right in there. And that little locking mechanism just goes ahead and as you push it in, it locks that in place. When you need to pull it out, just grab that little pin, push up, and it comes right out. Just a different angle to help you out. All right, so then right up here, we'll find that ATX24 pin. That's what provides power to the motherboard. And so we pulled in that ATX24 pin cable from the back earlier. So we'll just need to bring that in. And then there's that same locking pin right here that we had for the video card. And that's going to be facing that way. So depending on how you brought it in, you might need to flip it over. And then we'll just go ahead and just push that in. You might hear a little clicking or you might feel the clicking as you're pushing it in. It will only fit one way. So if it doesn't fit that way, just flip it over. And definitely that little locking mechanism will help you know that, hey, I have it plugged in the right way or nope, I got it plugged in the wrong way. So at this point, we have the entire system built up. Mind you, minus the zip tie that I did just to so you can actually see what I'm doing here. But the entire system is connected. Video card, CPU power, ATX power, front panel connections, SATA data, SATA power, all going to everywhere they need to be. If you wanted to, if you don't care the way it looks, you can just stop watching now. Now, if you wanna make it look a little bit pretty, we're going into that right now. So first off, right up here, we have all these cables dangling around. And because I was a little surprised at the way the power supply came in, we're going to have to play with it a little tiny bit. Not much. First off, just pull all the excess through up here, just to get this cable looking nicer over here. Perfect. And just pulling in with my finger so the cables down here are getting pulled, but that's okay. We have everything. So the case is again smaller, so cables have a lot more room here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and zip tie these cables up here together just so that it won't be a tremendous bundle of cable instead of just one bundle that's easier to manage. All right, and now the case gives us right over here, it's very hard to see, right over here, it gives us two cutouts so that we can actually fit a cable through, which will definitely help us in this situation, or not a cable, but a zip tie through, right in here. We'll just pull that over here. Just helps it look a little bit nicer. Now we have another one right over here but the cable is not long enough, or maybe it is, yeah, it is actually. But we don't need it that tight. We could if we wanted to. These cables, since we pushed in that power supply, it kind of moved everything and it makes everything just look a little wacky on the inside. So what I'm going to do with my hand around the back of the system, I'm going to pull each of those cables so that we get some slack back. But that power supply just made it so much more difficult. So unfortunately, that's all I can get for the HD audio cable. And now we're going to have all the slack of these cables right over here. And then the case gives us, certainly gives us some spots to attach some zip ties to. And so that makes things a little bit easier. There's another one right over here. Would be nice if there was one here but beggars can't be choosers. So let's see. So let me get two cables in there. Then this cable here.
Now in this last part, I am just kind of zip tying together all the excess cables, zip tying them all together. That way they don't show up in the hole up front over here. In the case, when you're looking in, you can still see all of this. Just trying to keep everything out of sight, out of mind. There is going to be any extra mess. This is so that I don't add any extra pressure to this cable so it doesn't tug out. Just zip time that right here. Now it's hard to get a good shot of it because of the way angled, but we're going to put the thermal guard on top of the M.2 SSD. On the shield, go ahead, remove this piece here. They should really put a sign that says remove me or something along those lines, okay? And I know it's very difficult to see. It's equally, if not more difficult to get to when you have everything in, but you get the idea. So in this video, I've walked you through the entire process of connecting every single cable, where every single cable comes from and where every single cable goes. We connected the SSD, the video card power, the liquid cooling, the motherboard, power supply, every single cable that could have gone connected. We connected it here. Then after we connected it, we made everything look nice and pretty. Look how nice that looks, how proper everything looks. Mind you, I'm sure I could have done a few things a little bit nicer, but with the camera literally being a foot away, it's very difficult to get a lot of things. So, you know, the way I hid cables over here. And then coming inside the system itself, it was a little bit difficult to get these PCIe cables to where they were. I was originally going to go through a grommet right over here. You can see my finger right there, but it would have hit the bottom of the video card, hitting the fans and not stopping them, but slowing them down. And then a little bit of a grinding against the mesh on the PCIe cable. So I completely avoided that by using one of the grommets on the power supply shroud. So the Montec 1000 case gives you a lot of options. Now, over here, one thing I could say, I had some issues getting the power supply in, but it could have been the dimensions on the power supply being a little bit too tall. I'll go ahead and I'll let them know about that as well. The other thing was there is a power LED button, but that button, I couldn't use the cable. That cable requires the premium case, but it is what it is. This is a budget case and really nice looking case as it is. And Aside from that one RGB cable and then maybe how tall the power supply could or couldn't have been, I probably could have done it a lot better. I like the case a lot. Everything in here, they're all high-end components. Video card, motherboard, power supply, CPU, liquid cooling unit, mind you, 240 versus 280. I could have put the 280 up at the front, but I did the 240 up at the top. Everything is high end. The case looks high end, but it is a budget case. So that's pretty awesome. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought about this video. Did I help you? Did I do something you didn't feel right? Let me know down in the comments. I, I'd love to hear back from you guys. In my next video, we're going to be flashing the BIOS, installing Windows and all the drivers, configuring everything. I get you from the very beginning from building an entire system to cable management to get you to the point that you can start playing your games, editing your videos and photos, anything and everything you want to do on your computer and get you up and running to the point that you start doing that. But that's about it for now. Again, this was my video on how to cable manage inside of the Montec Air 1000 Lite with all the components listed down below in the description. Iggy with this bites for you up. See you guys.